I have a T-Mobile network update that I wanted to, to discuss with you guys today. Break it down in more detail. Hope you guys can stick around. Make sure you guys like this so we can get it out there. Because Neville, in the words that he used today, he's, he's admitting what I've been saying for a very long time now. So today, Neville presented at the big 5G event that took place in Austin, Texas. And of course, he's going to present and, and, and talk about the 5G leadership that they've been able to obtain. So T-Mobile has been able to shift towards that very early on. So they had a vision. They knew Verizon got out to the lead in LTE or during LTE. And then AT&T followed with, with its network size. They, already, they were already spending more on the network. So it didn't really take AT&T long to overlay their HSPA network with LTE, which left T-Mobile from playing from behind. It really did. There's just no other way to put it. That's a fact. T-Mobile played from behind. They, inv they invested. They were very disciplined as a company, as a smaller company. They were, still, they were a standalone company. They made some good moves, good decisions, and then they pivoted very quickly. As soon as they got the 600 megahertz spectrum, they pivoted very quickly. They started adding dual band radios onto their sites that were NR capable. And here we are, are today. During very early in the presentation, T-Mobile put up, I mean, Neville Ray put up on the board that they now cover 1.8 million square miles of the United States landmass with its low band 5G, which covers around that covers around uh, 315 million pops. Now, here's where it gets very interesting. He is saying that that 1.8 million square miles is only covering 47% of the United States landmass. So he still has a long way to go to really catch his competition. He, is, he, he understands that they have the leadership, and that's the story that they're telling the market. But what he's saying here, he also understands that he is still behind his competition. Right, If we go by the native networks, AT&T is in the lead. And this is per the reportings. This is not the, the crowdsourced will tell you something else as well. But per the numbers that are out there publicly, AT&T covers natively 2.81 million square miles of the United States landmass, followed by Verizon at 2.6 or more than 2.68 million square miles covered. Now, that doesn't include all the other net network partners and roaming deals that Verizon has. That still makes Verizon bigger per the crowdsourced. But those are the numbers that we know of today. Now, the 1.8 million that Neville referenced during this presentation is the size of his 5G and R network. His LTE network is still bigger with covering the geographical landmass of the United States. Now, I don't have... The most up-to-date numbers, I've been trying to track that down, but there just isn't anything more up-to-date. The most up-to-date numbers that I have that, that, are, that I've seen publicly puts T-Mobile between 2.2 to 2.4 million square miles covered with its LTE network. So if they're on the lower end, if they're at that 2.2, then if you do the math, I mean, they're, they're behind by quite a bit. In some, you know, around four to five hundred thousand square miles of the United States landmass, they don't cover at all. They use some type of roaming or agreement in those parts. That is, and I've said this in previous videos, that is that is just about the entire state of Texas, the entire landmass geographically of the state of Texas behind the competition. That's huge. So he's playing, he's ahead in the 5G space, right? He's playing in that arena. But there's a whole nother arena 
in terms of size of the United States landmass land that he doesn't play in yet. They have no coverage. They, they don't compete. And that doesn't just go for the pops, right? He can say that he covers, right now he's saying he covers 95% of the pops with 5G. They're saying 99% of the pops with LTE. He can say that all day long. He can cover, he can put up a, a one tower and cover the pops in a small town. But what about 20 miles uh, north of that town? If you need to go out to visit Aunt Mary, are you still going to have coverage? And that's where that extensive coverage part comes in. And they just, they don't, don't cover that today. And that's not really anecdotal that you can, you can go by facts on that. It's, it's, it's millions of Americans that'll tell you that there's crowdsourced, there's third party that backs that up, that T-Mobile is still the smaller network in 2022 and Neville actually admits it. So here here's something interesting that I wanted to to bring up. And I'll read this paragraph. I will leave this article in the description down below so you guys could check that out. You guys can break it down for yourselves, but this is very interesting. How the U.S. compares with other countries on 5G is also up for debate. For one thing, the geographical coverage of 1.8 million square miles that Ray claims to provide is only 47% of the U.S. landmass. No doubt much of this is unpopulated, but T-Mobile's network also compromises only 102,000. 102,000 macro cells in total, which is going to go down to 85 once, they're all, once that's all said and done and the sprint sites are decommissioned. Across all technology generations, the equivalent ratios in 5G-rich China and South Korea are in the double digits. If denser networks turn out to be necessary for more advanced 5G services, T-Mobile's spending budget may have to go up. I've been saying it. The tech extremist has been saying it. Other have, others have been saying it. T-Mobile is going to have to spend more. From an overall network standpoint, even though they have been able to claim the 5G leadership, they are still behind. They are playing from behind. In order to catch the driver that's in first place, you have to be faster than him in order to catch him and then surpass him. So in order for T-Mobile to catch up, they're going to have to spend the same, if not more, as their competition. And we all know Verizon and AT&T have been spending a hundred plus billion over this last decade. Their capital, if you go by their capital, if you backtrack, their capital intensity has been at around the levels that they are at now, pretty much. I mean, they, have, they haven't been spending the 20 plus billion, but Verizon has been very comfortably been in that 17, 18 billion dollar range. And so has AT&T for the better part of the LTE decade. So T-Mobile has to up their spending. They have to go up. For one, we still don't know if those 10,000 new sites that they're bringing online is fully going to bring them toe-to-toe -to -toe with at and and Verizon. That was never disclosed. We don't know what the total geographical footprint will, will, they will cover once those 10,000 new sites are built out. Like I said, I saw 2.2, 2.4. What if that 2 point, what if that 10,000 only gets them to 2.6? For example, we, we don't know, right? We're speculating, but what if that only gets them to the 2.6? Maybe 2.7 million square miles covered. By that time, at and Team and Verizon will already be further ahead. They'll be covering mountains with small cells and, and putting up more cell sites. Maybe not even to expand into new territory, but to perfect the coverage that's already existing. Like Verizon acknowledged, they need to add about 2,000 macros yearly 
to close up that densification for the C-band. So that's another thing too, T-Mobile getting into the coverage areas that they didn't cover before. What, what quality of coverage are we going to get? Are we going to get four, five, six, seven cell sites along that stretch for better quality overall? Or are we just going to get two cell sites at the beginning and at the end, and they're going to stretch them over a certain amount of miles? Now, I know at and and Verizon have done that too in the past, and in some cases they still do it, but you know they're starting to fill in those gaps where, where it's needed and because the, the money is there. So, like I said, read this for yourselves. Very informational, very eye-opening. T-Mobile is starting to admit and understand that they may have to spend more. And they've been increasing CapEx on a quarterly basis so far. They have been. Every time they grow more, they, they have more success in the quarter, they go up another 100, another 200 million. Now, that's not you know anything groundbreaking, but it's, it adds up and it helps. It helps get, get them to their end goal. But the whole notion that they can spend less next year, you know, in the outer years, they want to drop it to eight, nine million, a billion on CapEx. That ain't going to happen. That ain't gonna, that's not going to get T-Mobile where they need to be because Verizon and AT&T are coming. They're knocking on the door. If you look at, if you look at the chart that Neville showed today at, in terms of the 5G availability, he's at 65%. Verizon's at 50. I mean, they're closing the gap so fast. By the end of the year, I mean, that could be Neville going up there saying he's only ahead 8% in availability. I mean, at what point, what else are they going to, you know, brag about? Maybe they, they have a head start in rule. That, that might still be true. Like he says, there are no public plans for Verizon to go above 250 million. And I mean... I'll give him that. He's right. There is nothing public. Are they going to do it? Yeah, we can we can speculate behind the scenes and say that they're going to go there, but they haven't said anything publicly. They said they will get to 250 million covered by the end of 2024, and that's kind of where they left it. And that's what T-Mobile is going off of. So again, we will see. We will see what happens, but there's a lot of there's a lot of truth here. Um uh, some some of it is, is is a bit stretching, where he says that, you know, combined, the holdings between Verizon and AT and T one hundred megahertz. We all know that's not the case. We all know they both have more. Right, Verizon has CBRS. In some cases, Verizon can go one hundred megahertz. In some of these markets now, they can go sixty forty with their CBRS holdings or sixty thirty, depending. So he's stretching it a bit, but I think what he meant to say is deployment. You know, 60 megahertz him, 40 megahertz AT&T on that 5G mid-band layer C-band. So let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Like I said, he's kind of admitting like, hey, look, I cover 1.8 million square miles with 5G, but that's only 47% of the landmass. So I still got more to go, right? The total... I think the total square miles of the United States is like 3.7 million. So they got a ways to go to even catch and play in the arena where AT&T and Verizon have coverage. Because they simply don't. They, they either have roaming in those parts or they got nothing. So again, let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Look forward to reading your comments. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Follow my social media outlets for more updates and interactions. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.